2 Kings chapter 4, verse 18. And when the child was grown, we don't know what age, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. That's all we know about what. And he said to the lad, to a lad, carry him to his mother. So here's another child, young person. The son comes up and goes, oh, my head, my head. And the father's like, carry him. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. So death, whatever it was, he died. Dies in his mother's lap. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. Now let's run to verse number 10, chapter 4. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. And let us set for him a bed, a table, a stool, and a candlestick. Now why she laid him on this, what people call a prophet's chamber for Elijah, and not the boy's own bed. I don't understand. But she's going to get to the point. She's going to have a little blaming against Elisha. Maybe that's why she does. But I, I can't read into it. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. That's that room they built. And shut the door upon him. And went out. And she called unto her husband. And said. Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men. So this man has a field of reapers. He's got lads. He's got young men. He's got all kinds of workers. She goes up to her husband, and he, and he meets her, it looks like. I need a young man. And does not ever tell the father the, the child has died. Now, the father knew, oh, my head, my head, neither does he question. I need one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. Now, I'm not much of an animal person, but as far as what I've seen, asses don't go that fast. I don't know if he had horses. That I may run, so we use the expression, hey, I got to go run and do an errand. Comes right out of the Bible. The man of God, and come again. I'm going to go meet the Elijah, and I'll be back. And he said, wherefore wilt thou go to him today? Maybe because of your son. <laughs> that would be one obvious reason. I don't know. It is neither new moon, that was the feast of Israel. Now look at that, that new moon. This is a time that the new moon was a celebration of the Israelites. The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, by the law, the first of the, first of the month. Nor Sabbath, that's the seventh day. And the other special Sabbath. Why are you going to the prophet? It's not to go see the prophet time. And she said, it shall be well. Well, look at her faith. She's got a dead son. I'm going to Elijah. It's no holiday. It's no special occasion. I'll be back. All is well. Kind of interesting. Then she saddled an ass and said unto her servant, drive. So on the car shifter levers, in 2018, you have a D for drive. There it is. comes out of a Bible. Why not F for forward? Why not S for straight? Drive. And like I said, I don't, I don't check modern Bibles. I don't know what the modern Bibles say. That probably may be something interesting, but I stick to the King James. Drive. Get going. And go forward. <laughs> See, I said F for forward. 
Slack not thy writing for me, except I bid you. This is get going. We're not going to make no stops. We're not going to make no pit stops. We're not going to stop at the gas station. We're not going to stop fast for directions. We're going. We're leaving point A. We're going to point B, and there will be no other points. That's what she's saying. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. That's where Elijah had the battle. That's where Elijah set up the, the, the altar of the Lord, the 12 stones. And this seems to be the central point for Elijah. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off. That he said to Gehazi, or Gehazi, however you want to say it, his servant. Now this guy's good. He's been good up to now. But he's going to go bad. But remember, he's in this story with this woman. This woman in the Gehilzai is going to come back to play again for the king. It's going to happen later on. But here he is. He said to Gehilzai, his servant, Behold, yonder is a Shulamite. Look, here, she co here comes that woman. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? She's here for a reason. She's not making a social visit. We make the social visit to her. She's coming to me. Is it okay with you? Is it okay with your husband? What about the son? And she answers with a lie. It is well. I don't want to talk to your servant, Elijah. I want you. And if you take Elijah type of God here, I want to speak to you, God. I've got a serious problem. I don't want to deal with other men, as religion does. I want to go straight to you. And the only way to get straight to God is the one that says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So here we have a type of coming to Jesus. i got a very serious prayer request. I've got a dead boy in the bed at home. Don't send me your man. Don't send me your servant. Don't send me. I, I'm not even interested in your pastor right now. I'm not interested in somebody. From, I want you, God. And when she came to the man of God, to the hill. You know, look, now you, you think I'm talking about with Jesus Christ. Look at the expression. She caught him by the feet. Is that not the disciples as the resurrection of Jesus? They were at his feet. Interesting. Because we're going to look at a resurrection too. But Gehilzai came near to thrust her away. Get out of here, woman. Well, how dare you lay your hands on his feet? Get out of here. Now, Gehilzai is protecting Elijah. It's good interest. And the man of God said, let her alone. You remember somewhere where Jesus said about a woman, said, let her alone? Her soul is vexed within her. Mary, man, she, she, she's wiping the feet of Jesus. She, she's taking because he's going to die. And by the way, Gehilzai will sell out just like Judas sold out. And the Lord had hid it from me and has not told me. So what we know by reading the death of this child, Elijah has no idea what's going on. And then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? No, she didn't. Did I not say, do not deceive me? Look at verse 14. Gehazi said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, very, she has no child and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, about this time, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace the son. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie. Unto him. It wasn't her that asked for it. It was Gehilzai saying, hey, if anything we can do for this woman, she doesn't have a child. So Elijah steps in and said, well, you're going to have a child. She's like, I didn't ask for that. And now I got death. And she's working her way slowly, slowly to Elijah to say, Right now, Elijah knows, okay, there's something wrong with that boy. Maybe he's rebellion, maybe, maybe he's sick, something wrong. Then he said to Gazeel, gird up thy loins. 
And with their garments is they would tie it up so they could run. And take my staff in thy hand. Almost like Moses and Aaron. And go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. We say oriental people, when they stop and they see somebody, they can carry a, 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 an hour, hour and a half conversation with greeting. When Esau and Jacob meet, I, I've set this present for you. I don't want it. Hey, take it. No, I don't want it. They're for you, my brother. I'm just, you know, I'm just so happy to see you. I don't want it. I got enough. Well, come on. Will you take these animals? Because it make me feel better. I don't need it. I'm poor. And they just carry on, carry on. Finally, Esau says, I'll take them. He, he, when they gather, the Oriental people, are, they're, they're not into, let's hurry up and get business done. They'll bow before each other. There are some, they will kiss the cheeks of each other. They will ask the welfare. They, and at this point, Elijah says, don't do that. Get over there. You go from point A to point B. And point B is that boy. Don't stop. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord liveth, here comes an oath. And as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Well, that's kind of interesting because let's read what we saw. Chapter 2, 2 Kings. And we'll just do verse 2, but this happens three times. Elijah said, Elijah, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elijah said unto him, as the Lord liveth. As thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Oh, that happens three different times. So, reaping and sowing, Elisha cannot get bitter and angry. I was just woman with go. Because Elisha, that's the same exact word you said to Elisha. I'm not saying he got angry. I'm just saying, here it is. Do you know in chapter 2 that we just read, do you know how important it was? We have to read little verses more, chapters more. But in chapter 2, what was the care of Elijah to Elijah? I'm not leaving you. And when we come to chapter 4, we see that causes Elijah's like a woman who's just lost her child. Elijah, besides God, you're my only hope. I ain't leaving you. And that's what Elijah was to Elijah. I ain't leaving. So it was serious, chapter 2. It is serious in chapter 4. I will not, as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. I wonder if that chapter 2 came into mind. Huh, let's go. It looks like he wasn't going to go. I'll let Gehilzai go and, and Gilhai passed on before them. And laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him. And told him saying the child is not awake. Dead. And when Elijah was come into the house. Behold the child was dead. And laid upon the bed. His bed. So let's go to Luke chapter 8. Hope that's eight. Luke chapter eight. Luke chapter eight. Ooh, I can't turn my pages here. Ooh. Very upset with this Bible here. I got it. trying to turn. Okay, now I have to turn one more page. I hope this is it. Did I write sloppy? Uh, all right, chapter 8, verse 51. When he, Jesus, came into the house, he suffered no man to go in save Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother and the maiden. Now here's just the mother. All wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, for she is not dead, but sleepeth. And then they laughed in the scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them out, he took her by the hand and, call, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. So here's a little girl, but with Jesus, 
she dies. He walks in there, arise, and gives her food. So here we go with Elijah. The servants come back and say, she's dead. They came to Jesus. Hey, she's sleeping. Ha, ha, he, it's certified Jesus. She's dead. So, he laid upon his bed. And he went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain. That would be the, the mother and the servant. And prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. First Kings 17, 17. First Kings 17, 17. Let's see Elijah double folding over Elijah. In 1 Kings 17, 17. By the way, John 17, 17 says, Sanctify him through thy, through thy word. Thy word is true. I thought, I think it's true. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, well, same thing what we got with Elijah. The son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. My head, my head. I'm not saying that's here, but that boy got sick somehow with his head. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, what have I to do with thee? Does that sound familiar? Thou man of God, does that sound familiar? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom. Well, he, child's laying in her bosom. That's on her knees, in her lap, and carried him into a loft. That room could be a loft. A loft is something higher. It's just a room where he abode. It looks like the same place where Elijah abode. And laid him upon his own bed. Does that sound familiar? Now remember, Elijah doesn't know anything about this. Elijah's not around yet, what we're reading. And he cried unto the Lord. And Elijah prayed to the Lord. Said, Lord my God, has thou brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? He stretched himself upon the child three times. Elijah, he's got mouth to mouth, eye to eye, hand to hand. He stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord. And Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come back into him. He's Again, he's dead. The Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came in unto him again and he revived. That's what re re resurrection means, revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down, brought him down out of the chamber, into the house. Let us make him a chamber. The bed. And deliver him unto his mother. And Elijah says, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth is true. Well, there we go. Now pick up back with Elijah. Verse 34, he went up. So when it said that that room is on the wall, when we ran to Joshua 2.15, it's like a, it's a second story, third story kind of thing. He went up and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands. There's the Bible CPR. You put your mouth upon their mouth, you got your eyes on their eyes, and you got your hands on them. And he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Something's happening. A body gets colder. It starts turning blue. He's getting warmer. 
I know that for a fact, that he returned and walked in the house to and fro. He's pacing. And went up and stretched himself upon the child, stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times. Sneeze is the only time that shows up in the Bible. Why did he sneeze? I don't know. And the child opened his eyes. And he called Gizhili and said, call the Shunammite. So he called her. She went. And when she was coming to him, he said, take up thy son. She went and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. And we're going to stop right there. So here we got resurrection. Elijah and Elisha. And they almost pretty much match. And then the next, Lord willing, the next part of the story, we're going we're to get something that Elijah never did. People should have died and they didn't. We had a little body of water that was bitter, barren, couldn't do nothing. We throw, He threw some salt in there. Now you got living waters. And then when he said, I want a double portion of thy spirit when you're called away. And Elijah says, hey, you don't know what you ask, but if you see me go. And he saw him go. And ever since parting that Jordan River again, Elijah's has been, wow. I mean, Elijah. Look at him go. And yet the Jews are called to look for Elijah, not Elisha.